Have you ever asked yourself, am I too sexy? I'm gonna answer that question with motivational comedian Stan Pierce in a second, next. You are tuned in to Black Hollywood Live, breaking into. There we go. I love it. Some of you guys know this song. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Welcome to Breaking Into. This is the sexy edition of Breaking Into. After 70 something episodes. Too sexy for my shirt. Exactly. Too sexy for our shirts. That's what we're wearing. Too sexy shirts. We're going to talk about what this all means. This is not the kind of show you think I'm talking about. Trust me. This is something a little deeper than that. I'm your host, James Lyde Jr. Welcome to Breaking Into here on Black Hollywood Live. I'm glad to be back with you guys again with another great guest. You can follow us on iTunes and YouTube under Black Hollywood Live, Breaking Into. Our Facebook page is Breaking Into. Go there, like it, follow. More, more stuff about my guests are on that page, and all the links to stuff are on that page. So, my guest today has an MBA. So, yeah, he got some smarts <laughs> with the college. Motivational comedian, host, author, actor, just great guy. His book is called Am I Too Sexy? Hello. And we're going to talk about what this all means. And, and how he's using this to help people with their self-esteem and just and success in life. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your Stan Pearson in a second. Thank you very much for having me, James. My it's pleasure. Pleasure. Welcome. Oh. Uh, okay, so, you know, we're just using the word sexy, and I love, I love the shirts, love the book. Um, what exactly is this book about, this movement about for you? Right. This movement is about teaching people how to find their sexy from the inside out. So this is the first installment of what sexy means. It kind of defines it, you know, you know, is it self-esteem? Is it confidence? Is it how you feel about you? So this book really outlines and uh, yeah, and, and illustrates what sexy is really all about and not what we generally think it is. Yeah, because you said something that's really important. You're talking about inside. Oh, yeah. Because we're, we're, we're in Hollywood, uh, we're in this, you're in this industry, I'm in this industry, right. it's all about the visual, and as men a lot of times too, we're very visual, Uh huh. but you're talking about something, you're talking about something inside, something like in your center, in your core, the sexiness there, correct? Certainly, absolutely, I honestly feel like we do or don't do things based on two very simple factors, how we feel about ourselves and how we assume other people view us, and that either keeps you from doing something, being somewhere, introducing yourself to someone versus mm. doing it, so it's really paying attention to two of those factors. Interesting, that, that you just said something that also clicked for me, like things that hold you back from actually approaching somebody for you, I guess a job, Heck yeah. friendship, relationship. Yeah, like there's something that always kind of stops us, but that has to do with some kind of insecurity based on do we feel like you know we have what it takes to approach this person or how are they looking at me? And neither one should matter because you're both people standing there that can take advantage of a great opportunity. Interesting, because because nowadays, especially with the onslaught of uh, on, on media, social media, we're yeah. presented with images that, to me, are always the best of people. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes <laughs> yeah. they're filtered and altered. We've always, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. We've always had Photoshop and stuff when it comes to like magazines, and they, we always, always, always had that. Thank so you. it's like there's nothing new. But now it's all self filtering because all these little apps and things right yeah like you can take your own pictures and make you look prettier <laughs> whatever, whatever that means like yeah, yeah, i don't even need you anymore photoshop <laughs> <laughs> you literally can i mean yeah so it's like and i feel like sometimes you see someone else's perfection and feel like maybe because they have it going on that means you don't I'm glad you said that. That's my segue. It's like how, I mean, that's the problem. You're seeing yeah. the best of people. And even I fell victim to it a little bit. Not so much the looks wise, but the, don't people have jobs? On Instagram, yeah. like everybody's on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm funny. traveling, to, I'm in Bora Bora. I'm in Hawaii. I'm like, how do you, I mean, you live in San Francisco. Your right. rent's like $6,000 a month. How are you? Right. Are you hooking on the side? Like what's going on? Like how are you always on vacation? And I'm sitting here working 80 hours a week trying to make things happen. Right. It's funny because you know your truth. You yeah. don't know theirs. It's kind of like mm -hmm. in, in marketing or in, in acting, if you're doing live stage plays, whatever, your, your audience only knows what you tell them. And most mm -hmm. folks are just really good at that, you know, camouflaging yes. Yes. the truth. Yes. Some people thrive because of that. Yes. Now, how'd you come up with the sexy thing? Because there's many different adjectives you could have used or nouns or anything, but why Why sexy? Sex, I mean, it's a, to me, it's a, it was a word that was misunderstood. And the word that, yeah, the, the, the word that people under misunderstand the most, and it was the most fun. Obviously, you know, coming into yeah. I'm too sexy. And so people use that word, but typically it means, you know, a, a physical attribute. Mm -hmm. But 
people don't understand that that what makes people sexy is like that inside piece that they're willing to share that really turns up the volume. Now, this is gonna sound crazy. A lot of folks seeing people that they wouldn't consider desirable. All right, mm-hmm. people, you're like, how did they get together? Yes, you do that see that sometimes. Yes. yes, it's that intersexy. It's yeah. like that piece of yeah. them that they they recognize their gift. Yeah, and that's the part they project, and that's why they stay winning. I always tell somebody something. Hey, I'm a big guy. Always been a big guy, uh-huh. and you know, I I always tell people all the time, I've never had a problem getting a, getting attention right. from from people. Say yeah. that. <laughs> and and I got that actually from my mother, who's saying she's a big she was a big woman. And she's she was uh, single for a long time after uh-huh. my father and before my stepfather, and she's always saying they like me. I don't have to worry about it because I know with her it's her personality. And she's pretty too, and I know I'm halfway decent looking. Um, but no, but it's like personality. Um, are you a kind person? Yeah. Are you funny? Oh my God. I, I, nowadays yeah. I'm like, if someone can't give me a conversation, I don't want to talk to you. Right. You're done. I mean, there, there are folks out there that people would consider, again, physically yes. gorgeous, beautiful, yes. handsome, but they're like a box of rocks. Talking yes. to them is like a brick wall. Like that. That fades immediately. Yes. Even if you try to ignore it, at some point you go, Godly, I can't talk to a brick wall for the rest of right. my life. And that helps you, again, pay attention to the things that matter. You know, because even, yeah, even to them, they're empty, right? Some right. folks spend their, the majority of their life or a quarter of their life depending on that outside mm-hmm. persona and they've, you know, left inside. That's so true. Like, and it's like there have been people who I have completely been turned off because they're not nice. Just not, nice. and they're good looking. I mean, I mean, I mean, I totally good. You're like, oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Like, I got to look three or four times before I turn away. <laughs> I'm like, sure. Yeah, okay, right, sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh my god, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> oh, I've done it several times. I'm like, I was. I mean, I was in it, focused like, in the and zone. It, yes. And I was like, nah, it's okay. I mean, and in the long run, obviously, it was best for me to go. But it's like, but that is, I, I agree with you. The intersexiness comes sometimes from intellect. Yeah. Humor is another big one, too, I'm sure, yes. Big time. And ta- like, if I was, you know, giving relationship advice to someone, oh, how do I get this person's attention? How do I get them? No-? If you can introduce them to something that, uh, one of your strong attributes, something that you're confident and sure in, people fall in love with power. Yes. You know, power and yes. kind. Con- and if you're, if you, they find you in your most confident state where you're most comfortable, that's where they're going to, you know, you're going to generate some of those feelings, some of that desire, so they can see you in your best, mo- and then you're comfortable. Because that's mm-hmm. in your wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. Some folks don't pay attention to that either. They don't. Yo Mama Cookin' is in the chat room. Hi, Yo Mama hey. Cookin'. I like that. Are you a good cook? I know, right? right I was like, I love, me some, I love me some food. That's another one, too. If you can cook for me, Delicious. I'm all in. Uh, one of the things you, uh, you talk about is the making of stereotypes. Yeah. Can you expand on that? For sure. You know, I don't necessarily have an issue with stereotypes. Okay. I feel like it gives you a snapshot into who people are but it's then important to gather your own intel, you know, to be willing to look in the truth in each individual person. I've been to some times where I've certainly been the first black person someone's met. Yeah, because they've been like, dude, you're the first black person I've ever met. You know, like that's (laughs) as true as that is or awkward, but it's their reality. Yeah. Uh, So I already, I know there's an expectation. I know it's, you know, been served in the media and having what they may have digested, but now I have this opportunity to go, boom, no, this is how, this is who I am. So obviously the media, they have a job, you know, it's a billion dollar industry to mm-hmm. either yay or nay things, positive, negative things. I also have my job, how I, how I digest those things, how I live through and because of those things. So I think sometimes we ignore our responsibility as it pertains mm-hmm. to self-esteem, confidence. It can't all be media or someone else's fault because I'm in control of me. Mm. Yeah, so that that's I feel like that's a piece we just have to do a better job. I like that you're in control of the me. I like that because that's something that is true. We have an opportunity. I mean, I, I mean, I make jokes when I was like, I'm the voice of Black America. <laughs> I can't always tell everybody what's going on. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, I just, I just have to break sometimes. But there are times when I really do. I am kind of representing Yo. us to certain people sure who it, it is a responsibility for me to show them a different kind of black person. Yeah, man, just in case. So like, mm. even like when I travel, when I'm on a plane, I meet someone, I mean, I always try to be my best self anyway. Yeah, always, yeah. But just, uh, you, you know, my, 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 my morale, the way I carry my, whatever it is, mm-hmm. I want them to know that this is the standard, not the exception. Yes. So yes. when I'm traveling, when I'm meeting people, I want them to be like, yo, cause I don't know if I'm the first men, me they've ever met That's before. True. And just in case the next brother they want into, they run into, I want that to be a positive experience yes. for him. You know, we won't be there to see it. No, no. But it will be because of this interaction, the interactions like 
Well, here's the thing. We won't see it, but we will feel it at some point. We will feel it. Because at some (laughs) point, the ripple effect will happen where, you know, a whole town, a city, wherever you're at, people will come, someone will fly somewhere else and meet you and go, they'll treat you differently because they met someone who showed them. Period. Now, is that fair? Maybe not. But life isn't fair. It just is what it, and I hate that phrase, but it simply is what it is, that we're human, we're natural. That's just what it's going to be sometimes. That's true. Well, oh, my, my mama cook says she does cook. She has a video. She made some chicken. Uh, my, my, hey, just go ahead, tag us. Let us see what it's looking like. <laughs> yeah, At least yeah, it looks yeah, delicious. Yeah, yeah, we don't know what it tastes like. We sure it tastes delicious, too. Yes. But, but, I'm sorry, but it's funny. So you said, so you don't mind. So so you believe there's some truth in stereotypes. <sighs> yes. Yeah. They, they, they exist for a reason. Yeah. You know, there's some stereotypes that, you know, folks benefit from. Now, mm-hmm. most of uh, it's funny that, you know, being athletic you know, someone will be, oh, go into the gym. Now, it's funny because most of our stereotypes don't really matter. The yeah. good ones. Right. The good ones are, obviously, we're really athletic. Yes. If we walk in the gym, <laughs> I'm likely not going to get picked up last if there's white guys in the gym. Like, I'm, I'm fairly safe. I'll yes. at least get to play yes. one game to prove myself. Yes. Uh, so it's like, if I can, let's say, recognize that one, then I understand the other ones exist for a reason as well. Now, if I decide to purposefully plug myself into some ner- negative stereotypes, well, uh, then... Oh, yeah. You know, I have to understand the consequences of that. And especially if it's not who I am. Mm -hmm. There's some folks, it's just their life. It's Mm -hmm. who they are, what their experiences have been. But I I tell, I know guys, we grew up in the suburbs, loving home, loving household, support. But you're trying to live the life of a guy that you maybe grew up on 65th and Langley in Chicago. And I love, you know, my family and friends there. That's their life that, that it's just theirs. And so they operate accordingly and work in their way to a different place or always improving themselves. But here it is. You've never seen that. You've never, that would be like me living that. That's not my right. life. Right. You know, so. I love, there's an episode of It's Sunny in Philadelphia, Always Sunny in Philadelphia from years ago where <laughs> they're so bad. So when they're picking basketball teams with these kids, they're watching these kids, and one of them picks all black kids. And he goes, You can't do that because do what? <laughs> you can't do that. I mean, and, and the kids just stand there. It's one of my funniest episodes on earth. It's so I funny. I love it. Because it's a, it's a stereotype that they played on also. Of course. And it's like, oh, they're black kids. They can play basketball, yeah, right? Good. You know, crazy, if you don't mind me sharing. The, I Please. did a, uh, I, I was speaking at a leadership conference, and it was at a, like a, uh, uh, a tech school. All right? Yeah. A lot of smart guys. A lot of smart girls. Anyway, so part of it was an open gym, like a sleep, whatever it was. Yeah. I go to the gym. A lot of black guys in the gym, a lot of everybody. I watched a gym for the black guys that had no idea how to play basketball. It was the worst basketball display I've ever seen in my life. And you know what, James? It warmed my heart. I get it that. It made me feel, yes. I was like, yes. Yes. Like, we do, we're smart. Right. Like, we don't, it, no, we're more than athletic. We're smart. We don't even have to be athletic. No, not we're anymore. Smart, right. Just like everybody else. So it just, it was weird because I, I was just there myself, just kind of sitting back like, it felt good. Yeah. yeah I get weird. that. I can swim. Yeah. <laughs> Show enough. I'm telling you, I took swim lessons. Like, I was a swimmer since I was five years old, so I can swim. That's what I'm talking about, man. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a little things. Yeah. And I know when we first met, you mentioned, uh, was it Black Ski Weekend? Mm-hmm. I was like, yes. He didn't even know. He didn't even know. I didn't know it was Black Ski Weekend. Yeah. I was the only streak out there, but I was <laughs> did what I could. Yeah. But there was those kind of things that, like, yeah, we should know about everything, yeah. not just the stuff we're supposed to know about, right. all of which I find are sexy. Yeah. I, I, I like that. I do like that. You also talk about um, the sexiness self-evaluation. There's, like, some stuff you have to write in. So, what I mean, so oh, how sure. do you self-evaluate your sexiness meter? Yeah, you know. I was in Pennsylvania recently speaking, and I told uh, them, like, a growl. I was like, sometimes, you know, you wake up in the morning, you look in the mirror, you know, you give yourself a little growl. You know, yeah, if, you feel good. Yeah, if nobody else gives yes. you the growl. Yes. I was like, a growl yes. a day keeps the depression away. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, part, yeah, part yeah. of it yeah. is that piece, like, yo, I love me, I feel good about me. The other part is being really honest with you. Like, there are some things in life that aren't going the way you want them to. Mm. Like, how much, how much, in, how, how invested are you in that? Like, what mm. part are you playing in the disruption in your own life. It can't always be someone else. That's true. You know? So I feel like that's like part of that evaluation is going, like, okay, what part am I playing in my, my success, my victory? What part am I playing in my demise? Let's write that out. Let's map that out. Let's positive affirmation here, right? I mean, and, and I mentioned that 
you know, there's, uh, again, there, there's television, you know, that guides us in a certain way. We're constantly programmed, duh. You know, so what are we doing? Are we, are we programming ourselves every day, reprogramming ourselves every day to just feel good about us? Because if you don't, it's like driving a car forever, never filling it up with gas. It is going to stop. There is, um, to go just even a little deeper than that, folks, yeah. even going even deeper, is that yeah. people ask me all the time I, about, I always say, when did slavery really end? Uh-oh. You, we're going that deep? A little deeper. Ah, James! I'm going to bring you there for a second. Oh, okay. Because I think the self-evaluation mixes in with that. I'm a life coach, and I talk about this with my, with my African-American clients, or yeah. my black clients, whatever you call yourself. Yeah. Um, we talk about that because there's, there's yeah. mental slavery. For sure. You know, I, I was born in the civil rights movement. I was, I was one of the first kids in segregation in the 70s. I mean, I know wow. all the stuff. Wow. You know, I, I know all that stuff. And so I know that there are levels... For especially for our people, sometimes men and women, we get dumped on a lot, and there's a lot of imagery that's out there for sure to find our sexiness. I'm sure we have to really dig deep. Heck yeah! And you have because when you visit that, we're talking about uh, generational, uh, yeah, 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 generational pain mm -hmm. that we've passed on, and sometimes you know whether it be inherited or part of genealogy at some point, because it's literally it, we're soaked in it. So mm -hmm. the, the notion of breaking. The, those barriers breaking into <laughs> breaking into, <laughs> breaking into. <laughs> and being willing to do that yes. like am i willing to visit this this pain that is part of my past or part of my historic family's past to be better sometimes we're not. well we're taught not to do that remember our, our people especially my, my folks from the south a lot of times it's you don't talk about it you don't revisit it you know what's done is done but like they don't realize it's it's there and a lot of people don't don't go to a lot of people don't go to therapists yeah, yeah. Or their pastor. Right. You know, it's like whatever your your your, your, your person is or a doctor or whatever. It's like, we got to learn how to do that more so we get in touch with ourselves. Like, For sure. It doesn't matter what race you are. Just like, just get that out of your brain. Right. You have to get that off you because it, it like anything else, it weighs you down. You, be, I mean, depression is a very real thing. So mm -hmm. if life already is bad and now you're not just in your life, but then you begin to look at the world and how it, it was interesting to me, like things that I had, the things that bothered me that were on me, but then let's see, I see something that happens to you in person or via virtually or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like that almost happened to me. Now that's on me. And folks, we just have to do a better job of getting that off us. I, I really feel like, again, you know, finding that sexy is also about you have to make room for it. And making room for okay. it is having the, the tough conversations that bring us to where we are as people. So you mentioned slavery. People get upset with me because I mentioned, listen, I, I feel like a lot of things it's it's modern day slavery in some ways. Mm -hmm. People, ah, it's no. Why would you compare this to what happened? I'm, I'm not doing that. That's why I said modern day. Everything yes. evolves. Yes. There's an evolution of things. There's a reason why a lot of our community in certain areas only feel like, especially black males, that they're only great at being an athlete. Mm -hmm. Like, who told you that? Some your parents may have told you that. Maybe yeah. Right. Maybe you're you're smart, but you never had to be. You're an athlete. So now, let's say the NBA doesn't work out. Now what happens? Because, yeah, there's LeBron James and Steph Curry. There's a whole lot of brothers out there. But then, millions of brothers that will never reach that point. I'm glad you said that because I always say this all the time. I think I've had everybody on this, everybody on this show of different, different backgrounds. <laughs> yeah. To get into the NFL or the NBA or the MLB or whatever we call whatever, baseball, yeah. uh -huh. we're talking just there's, a, there's hundreds of thousands of high schools with hundreds of thousands of talented men, and some women too, for some for things that who could play the game, that don't only like what one percent, two percent actually make it to the leagues. Right, right. And and what goes into that? So you're talking about like a, a pathway to success. Now we're obviously some of it is luck. Yeah, some of it, well, is, it is extreme work ethic. Yes, knowing the right people and having the yes. right approach. Like there are a lot of folks who didn't make it who were who were great yeah. athletes yeah, I'm sure who didn't make it why was that see that's the fine print that I don't know we're always discussing in our community as well mm -hmm. we got to discuss the fine print mm -hmm. like you can be a stellar athlete and smart and it's cool to be smart yes matter of fact it's cooler to be to be smart than it is to be the athlete yes and at some point you don't have to worry about your accounting counting your money you can count your money as well mm -hmm. so you're not getting swindled out of bunch of money which we all know yes. happens in the industry music industry athletics yes. a lot of folks get uh, messed out of their money because they aren't the ones counting it. The, you just the money. Well, okay. Everybody and the show is over. He just dropped the <laughs> mic. That, that's, that's serious because I always tell people, I was told as a kid I talk white. 
Oh man. I said it all the time. You talk white, you act white because I was smart. I was a spelling bee champion. Also, like man. that is not that is completely wrong. Every culture <sighs> has standard English, standard a standard language, it has a slang. And I could do both. I can get down home too, just like everybody else. Right. But I realized to make it in America, and this is not to me, I'm not sacrificing anything, just make it in America, I know when to speak, when to speak. Yeah. Period. And it, that's just it. And and, and it sucks because I learned that from people that look like me more than other folks. Yes. Which yeah, is, this was, yes. Which is frustrating because it's uh some folks go one route, they're like, I hate black folks, are like I hate black folks, right? Yes. <laughs> right, yes. Right, yeah. But I I mean, I love my people. I love black I feel like we're all we're sexy. Just, we're sexy. In I mean, so many ways in so many ways. Sexy in so many ways right. that I, I can't help but to love us. I just want my folks to love me as much as I love them. I mean, but in part that's what leads me to do what I do today mm-hmm. is uh you know, trying to reach out to folks that wouldn't normally mm-hmm. see me or mm-hmm. see folks like me to give them an open vessel so things can flow through. It. Well, I like, I like that. I like that you're a man of color because I don't say minority anymore because I'm not minor. Yeah, cool I don't well. say minority. I stopped saying I that like word a long that. time ago. I don't, I'm not minor. So um, that 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 you are the conduit to all races when you go out to speak. And so for so Hispanic and and this Latino and white and right. Asian, they all get to hear a message from a man of color. <laughs> That as you're like, that does sound legitimate. That does sound really smart. He has an MBA. Like, I mean, those things do matter in terms of breaking down the stereotypes we were talking about earlier. Breaking down the stereotype that he is somebody who is smart and went to college, college educated, but also is in tune with who he is. You can a black man can be all that. Yeah, and he can admit his faults. Which as I get older, I'm getting better at that. I'm yeah. not great at it. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> who likes to talk in the area about the areas that they suck in? Oh, that's but, true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But trying to get better about yeah, the, again that sexiness evaluation and mm-hmm. what it what is it and what it means. And I only know I can get better if I'm willing to acknowledge those bad things and to be vulnerable to again folks that look like me, folks that don't look like me to go. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, I thought this was perfect, but nah, they're messed up just like me, mm-hmm. which is cool. Mm-hmm. While some folks find solace in find someone whose life is screwed up. Some folks want to build as they see that, like they're building, we could both build, mm-hmm. you know, because we're both going through things. I want to about the male, now I want to about the male aspect because yes. we're black and there's all that. Sure. But then also there's the male part. Oh, as yeah. men in general, we're not taught to be emotional, nah. vulnerable, nope. sensitive. Nah. We can be, and there's some some kids, some boys are born this, they're sensitive and stuff, but we're in general, as a, I mean, I had to learn how to be sensitive, trust me. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> Oh my God! I'm like I just don't care. No, <laughs> right. Um, right. no but I've, I've but having daughters helps that. Trust me. Um, they bet. teach they teach you how to be. <laughs> they, they, they almost demanded of you. I have a granddaughter too. They, they demanded really? of you. Really? Yeah, wow. they demand they demanded okay. of you. Um, but no, but we're not. So I, I think for a lot of women, especially, sexiness in a man is a level of vulnerability they see in them, a level of sensitivity they see in them, a level of of ease they have about them. Is that is that true? Yeah. I, it, it, it makes me think of my fiance Cynthia. Who, yes, congratulations! Uh, thank you very, very much. I made people. I got you lucky. Did, okay. I got yeah. lucky. You can too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, you know, she. Uh, I mean, just expressed to me the importance of hearing certain things. For me, obviously, I, I speak for a living. Yes. But it's different, you know, in different Active contexts. Active listening, right? You know what I mean. So just mm-hmm. doing a better job of expressing when I do have feelings, uh, when I know there's something that I'd like to say that that's caring and it's sensitive, that typically I'd hold that back mm-hmm. to express that, and then seeing the joy, you know, the things that she may experience because of that, and then me going like, yeah, that it did feel good to get that off me. I don't have to be, I don't have to be fake tough, you know, or fake mm-hmm. strong. I can just be me. It's exhausting being somebody else. It's exhausting yes. not being who you are. Forget yes. being somebody else. Yes. It's exhausting not being who you are. I'm fully who I am. Man. I am. If that means I'm super sexy, I am. Because I am James Bond <laughs> Jr. Super Lodge duper, Jr. actually. <laughs> super duper. <laughs> I seriously, uh, I live in who I am. And getting older does help. Though getting older yeah. and doing the work, I did the work. I did the personal work. Um, but, I mean, I always come from center. I'm always present. I always try to do that. But it took me years to get there. Yeah. Um, but I'm so, I very much feel like I, I feel... I can feel the sexiness of just being who I am. And I know for a lot of people who encounter you, that energy comes off. Thank you. And I really, I like to be the same person no matter what. Like the person you meet on social media, it's going to be the person you meet in person. It's going to be the same thing. And I just want to give 
because we never know what folks are going through. So you know. person, you know, B has nothing to do with even if it's a bad day. So uh, I want to meet you with a smile or just with with sureness that I see you. I feel like there are a lot of folks out there who feel invisible. So yes. those are the people yeah. that you say hi to. They don't even know you're talking to them because that no one's seen them. I had a guest on here uh, yeah. who made me change my view on uh, on people at large, like some homeless people and things like that. And he said, what he realized one day, because he goes, one day he was in traffic, and it always happens, and you live in L.A. <laughs> right. You're trying to get somewhere across town. <laughs> no matter what time of day it is, I get across town. No matter what time. Whether it's an audition or a meeting or meet your cousin or whatever, and it's traffic, and someone homeless or just someone kind of crazy just walks across the middle of the traffic in a busy street and stop. everything stops. Because wow. they're walking across the street. And you're sitting away from the cross. Everybody's honking. And, blah, blah. and he said to me, he goes, I realize in those moments, they just want to be seen. Wow. Because they're invisible. They're on the street. We walk by them all the time. They're oh, just a crazy man. person. It was deep. It was deep. When he said it, it was very deep. And I said, I get it. He goes, it goes, everybody from childhood on wants to know they matter. Yep. And raising children, I learned all they want to know is, if, do you love them? Can you, can you see them? Yeah. Everything else comes. Everything else is born out of that, right? Period. So I think now I look at all what you said. People who feel invisible just want you to say hi to. I kind of goes, yes, and that's sexy too. Being generous to people and saying hi to folks. Yeah, just being kind. Like it, why not? It costs no money. money. It's free. It's free. It's free. <laughs> but you know, but I, I realize better at you know realize that that all comes from a place. You talk about your core, the root, and there are some folks that maybe they. Obviously, maybe a rough childhood, rough life. They've never had that feeling that they matter, that they deserve to be happy. So then it's my job to project. So then maybe the, the fifth grader never has a chance to be happy because mom and dad have projected their, let's say, terrible circumstance onto this child who's just trying to live. Yes. Now that person, the five, fifth grade, grows up being cynical, and then the cycle adjust. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, we have an opportunity at some point for who's ever watching or listening to go, okay, this is the truth. This is the core, the root. This is where this anger, sadness, depression comes from. This is how I address it. This is how I break mm -hmm. the cycle, which we can do. It's not always easy. No, but you can do it. But you can do it. Everything's worked though. And I, I just, we get to this point yeah. in life, people are yeah. so lazy sometimes. Like, I don't, I just want to snap my fingers. <laughs> this isn't bewitched or whatever. Like, just snap your your nose and yeah. it all happens. But sometimes you have to really put in the work and the hours you have James. to put it in. And you know, I'm a hard worker. So, you know, I go and I, I will work it. Yeah. Come on, people. That's sexy too. Yeah, it is. You know, I, I mean, this is slightly off topic, but I think not my friends or people I know that do network marketing and mm -hmm. stuff, they're like, ah, it's, you know, it's pyramid, it's a scam, you know, whatever, right? I'm like, it takes work. Or the people that are like, oh, it doesn't work. And they, they stole my money. No, it takes work. It takes that work. person that's at the top or making millions, it took work. They had to hustle. They mm -hmm. heard a lot of no's. They got the buck. I mean, it, they went through a lot. Mm -hmm. That, like anything else, takes work. I would, I, I would, the, it's the equivalent for me of, I, again, I'm kind of afraid of yoga. I've done it one. Oh, I love yoga. It's I've fine. done it one and a half times. I'll say that. <laughs> so what's a half time? It was humbling. I, <laughs> I don't want to talk about the half. Okay. So, okay, so I'm like, okay, I'm like, <laughs> but, yes. But it's tough. Yeah. Yeah, obviously, it's stretching, moving, it's focus. Yeah. I would consider, let's say, pursuing success and let's say your sexiness is the same. If you've never done it, the first time you do it, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. And do it the next day. So it's like doing it every single day. So one day, just touch a book. Or you're like you. You're like, nah, I'm super sexy. I know this because I've been practicing this every single day. Mm -hmm. It's a part of your makeup now. We have to make that a part of our genes. That's very true. And also, growth spurts hurt you sometimes. They, they do. <laughs> oh, my. See, look, I see what you did there. Mm -hmm. I see what you did. He mm -hmm. went the genes. He took. Never mind. I did. <laughs> they hurt. Growth spurts hurt, too. They hurt, too. James. Yes. Yeah, I'm like my first time at the rodeo. Um, awesome. So, okay, so you talk about bringing sexy back. So you feel that we have kind of gotten away from ourselves. I mean, was it always, was it around back in like in the 80s or not? Like, did we have it at one yeah. point? And then like it kind of <laughs> went away because everybody's kind of focused on, I have no money. I have no this. I can't do this. I'm not skinny. I'm not. Yeah. Is that going to happen? Yeah, because I feel like, all right, so everyone, even the most quiet person, they had that moment of like, oh, look at me. It's kind of like yeah. you ever walk into a club or party, you dress nice, you look sexy, like you look great. You feel the vibe, you're feeling good. At some point, sometimes, someone gives you that look like, calm down, yes. <laughs> bring it down a notch. Yes. You're doing too much. <laughs> it's kind of like in that moment, you might lose 
that oh, sex. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, yeah. it's gone. Even as a little kid, you know, what? having fun. You know, the monkey bar is having a good... I was at a, a party last night. It was awesome. I almost lost my... I was like, you having a good time? Like, movie shows, you, maybe person next to you, they're like, really, dude? Like, <laughs> relax. Like, you know, it's like, no, no, no. Got to stay in the zone. Yes. So I feel like when I talk, like, the, the notion of bringing sexy back, it's those moments, too, where you're like, I think I got it. Yes. And then you realize, wait a minute, the whole world doesn't love Stan. You know, but it, they I don't understand how they to, couldn't, but just, right. You know, I thank you. I no, agree no. with you as well. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's I mean, crazy. Was it? Was it not like you need I'm some, a, need some, some guy. Xanax? Like, what do you right. need? Yeah, what's <laughs> right. going on? I understand. But, right, but then the, the 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 notion or the ability to go, it's not even about you. Right. If I go if I go someplace by myself, I have I could be if me and ten friends are supposed to meet somewhere. I get there early. By the time the other nine get there, I'm having a good time. They're like, do you know those people? Nah, baby. I started my good time. I'm glad y'all here. Now you can join in, but I'm not waiting for all 10 of us to be here before the good times start. Right. Which and I'm, I'm a person who travels alone sometimes. Oh and people God. how do you do that? I'm like, actually, I like it. It's fun. Yeah. Sometimes I want to go with people sometimes, yes. And sometimes yeah. I want to do an adventure on my own. For sure. I'll go to the movies by myself, take myself out to eat. I think that it's important, and I'm trying to do a better job of, I'm a lot better at it now, at being okay with just being by myself. And the, the more I became okay with being by myself, the happier I could be with somebody else. Yes. So I'm not dependent on, it, it's starting to feel like it now just because wanting to be around someone so much. Mm. But the notion of I'm not dependent on someone else for my happiness. Like we're happy together or happy with friends together. But ultimately I'm happy and I'm bringing my happy to your happy. I'm still just sexy. Yeah. I'm and I was just saying sexy. being alone sexy would also be good because then it will attract somebody going, well, now you're just the icing on the cake. You're not the whole oh, cake. Period. Period. Right. People yeah. see. People see sexy. They do. I know. They, I feel I, it. They, they see it. They mm. feel it. I mean, uh, that's. I think it's important to teach people how to walk. Mm. You know, I feel like that people will see some walking. I've seen guys walk into a room and be like, "Who's that dude?" Whether he had nothing or had everything, a walk told me that dude knew. My who he aunt, was. who's seventy something years old, Miss Faith, I love you. Hey, Miss Faith. Uh, who's like four foot nothing. Oh. And we'll strut down the street. And once I called her out on her one time, we were walking down the street. I go, girl, are you strutting? She's like, what? I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah, but she, but she walks with confidence. Yeah. She's a pastor, and she, but That's she dope. walks with confidence. She wears clothes that fit her and that move with her. When you said walking, it just is so true. That's and she awesome. walks down the street. People notice her. They may not know who, who the F she is. Right. Who's this chick walking down the street? But she walks with a purpose, like, hi, I'm, I'm, and she's sexy too. Yeah, like, I'm on my way somewhere. Yeah. Like, knowing where you're going or even the appearance mm-hmm. is sexy. Like, it's really small mm-hmm. things. A smile, a greeting, eye contact, all things that are sexy. And most folks don't, aren't even able to do that. I feel like sometimes social media has dumbed us down in terms of using it so much. We're used yeah. to communicating here when here, that's where the power is. Like, when you I meet agree. someone and you let them know. Even I tell folks, when you introduce yourself, your name was the first gift you were ever given, even if you don't like it. Like, I got to know that, <laughs> yes. that you believe in it. And, and again, that is something that I feel like reveals sexy without you saying, hey, look at me. I'm sexy. Like, I, you don't have to be half naked on social media if you don't want to be because people see it through you, mm-hmm. not through the lack of clothing. They're whatever. agreeing on here. You guys are agreeing. I That's what I need to do. Though. Say that. Say that. Yeah, exactly. It's about. um, it's completely, I agree with you. And I, I'm a hugger. As you know, I'm a hugger. Yeah. I'm a handshaker. I'm, I just, to me, that's more intimate than sex in many ways. Yo. Advice when it's your space. Yeah. And saying, hi, I'm welcoming you in. Yeah. Nice to I'm see you. Trusting you. Well, I'm trusting you that you won't pickpocket me or anything while you're hugging me. Right. Um, or steal anything. But no, but that's, to me, that's, I mean, anybody can go out and have sex. That's just like, whatever. You just do that. Now it's not even intimate anymore. This is more like, I'm hugging you to say that I like you. I'm glad to see you. That's more vulnerable than anything. Yeah. I, that's I, sexy. Yeah, heck yeah. In my travels uh, recently, uh, an older woman gave me a hug. She's like, you're supposed to get four hugs a day. Uh-huh. And got, yeah, and I didn't even realize that. I think she mentioned something about self-esteem, boom, 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 building, like that it's, that it's something that you can Google. It's Googleable. Googleable. That, uh, Googleable. Like that we need four hugs, uh, four hugs a day to help lift our spirits. So it's something really small, but I feel like, again, that proximity. Watch out, people. My friends Watch already it. know I hug enough. The they hugs are coming. They're running from me. <laughs> You better get your three ahead of time. Okay. No, I'm only down one. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to run from me because I'm, I'm a hugger. I will hug the F out of anybody. Trust me. And if you, by the way, if you're going to give a hug, like, give give a good hug. Oh, All right. Yeah. Oh. Don't, if you, like, good hand, give a good handshake. Give a yes. good hug if you're going to bother Oh, my at all. God. Okay. Okay. So I wrote a blog <laughs> three years ago called The Perfect Handshake. Really? 
and it's one of the most popular blogs, thousands of hits. It was like just two paragraphs on how to give a good handshake. And I was like, because for me, I was tired of getting, especially from men, the biggest, burliest man would give me the limpest handshake. I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand. But Bugs the F out of me. Sometimes I feel like that's, deep, again, the deep part of it is like yeah. that's deeply rooted in some other things. Yeah, 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 I met an NFL defensive lineman once. I was like, whoa, what's head? Met the guy, shook his hand. It was like a wet noodle. I was oh like, I was God. disappointed. I wanted you to break my hand. Right, exactly. You know yeah, exactly. Put like, some me, power in it. Yeah, because we all know. I don't know if you know Adrian Peterson. Yeah. But like, he's known to be extremely strong. Has an, <laughs> has a grip. Well, a sure. strong handshake. <laughs> but, right. Yeah. So it's like you expect that. Yeah. From this beast yeah. of a dude. Yeah. It's like no, no. Mm -mm. That's so weird yeah. to me. It's it's like, just, so I'm like, again, it puts a good handshake with with combo with good eyesight at the same time. Yeah, it means something. Like I feel like it says that first off, you should see me. It says like we're equal. Yes. I feel like that's really important. That's for women and men the same. Yes. It's like yes. I'm not here, not hitting out. No, we're equal. Yes. And I feel like that lets people know right away. And from a, a business standpoint, moving and shaking, even relationships, I feel like people subconsciously or consciously recognize when you feel subservient, when you feel less than, when you feel like you are the, the minority, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. they may take advantage of that because they recognize it before you do. Mm -hmm. so keep that in mind, folks. Well, you teach people how to treat you. So that's that's always yeah. the, that's always the one. And, and, and then people will treat you how they meet you. Yes. So it's mm -hmm. like you gotta be careful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to undo some things. Yeah, jump, yeah. But most of the time, like you said, treat people, teach people how to treat you, mm -hmm. and then folks will treat you how they meet you. That's true. I like it. You don't see it, be it. That's what I always say. That's what I always say hey, all the time. We're in the zone right now. We are on sound I don't know if you could tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm not feeling looser now. I'm feeling sexier now. Yeah, I'm just I love Hollywood it. vest. I don't yes, even know. Yeah. By the way, I don't I, know. I like the, actually Thank like the vest. You. It felt Hollywood. I said, you know, I'm trying to get, I don't know what it means, but it has a little hood. Even though it's hot oh outside, God. I felt yeah. like, you know what? Hey. This feels like something somebody in Hollywood would wear. So I threw <laughs> it on top of it. That's so funny. How can people find the sexy shirts? Because these are, these are really nice. They Th feel good, too. Thank you very much. You can go to stanpearson.com. Okay. They'll be available, S-T-A-N-P-E-A-R-S-O-N. And or all my social media channels, uh, at the real Stan P. And if you hashtag Am I Too Sexy, you'll find a way to find okay. me. Okay. And then uh, we'll get them to you. Typically, either for groups or individual sale. So I ask my guests, and people know this at home, watch my show, um, the same two questions. I don't prep them with them, the <sighs> questions. No, you don't. I don't. You don't know. So... Um, I believe in language, and I believe language kids, you know, propel us forward or stop us in our tracks. I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of that. Yeah. So, first question to you is, what word do you think we should take out of the English language Ooh. and not say anymore? What word do you think you should take out of the Eng English language? Uh, mm, let's say if we're doing this, we want progress. <laughs> I know. Make does it, it doesn't usually take this long. No, it's okay, 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 take a little bit longer. Okay, okay. Does. I'll, I'll say word or phrase. You okay, word or phrase. Or phrase you know. it, uh, it, it sounds cliche. Can't. Like I, I feel like there's some words that they just are. They don't really bother me. A word like can't. That people use that word so much without knowing they're using it. I always tell people in my own practice too. Well, what if this doesn't work? What if it does? I can't do this. Well, if you can, like I mean, like I just—it's right. always the first. Like you go straight to the negative parts, right? But you maybe you can. Right. That like, yeah, that word always has an objection. Yeah. There's always an objection to can't. So why are we using it in the first place? Because the mm -hmm. truth is, you can't. You're just choosing not to. That's true. That's so that's, you, you really are choosing not to tap into your inner sexiness. Yeah, pretty much. Yes. And by the way, I know that some folks are like that's the word. There are a lot of words out there that exist, might be offensive. Yeah. Some things just are. I don't think they should yeah. be removed from the English language. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but can't. Well, I, I have no judgment when I ask people the question. <laughs> I just ask the question. Like explaining around it. Yes, yeah, exactly. There's like, some words that I still want to use. Okay. okay <laughs> I had somebody. We had to talk about that. Like my, my guests had to talk about that. One of the words that goes, yeah, I use it. Like I, my my friends, I don't use it in public. I was like, okay. <laughs> um, so on the converse of that, what word do you think we should say more of? Ah, uh, what word should we say more of? Yeah, what, what are we not saying enough? Uh, it, it, it's going to sound commercial, but I, I'm, the word love is coming in. I think it's underrated. Like it's completely Ooh. underrated. We okay. love I'm glad like you say that. like just like I love I, I love what you did yesterday. I love that you got back to me today. I love you. I love going outside in my garden. I mean, like just yeah. using the word, saying it's lovely. 
Yeah, it, it, again, it sounds so elementary, but if it were, then everyone would be doing it. You know, I think I was tell, recently kind of this mantra the last few weeks, based on an experience I had on the airplane, I was telling folks, you know what? Sometimes you just gotta let the love in. You know, so that's kind of what I'm on right now. But you're right, it's a word that we could use more that we don't. Even it sounds crazy on social media, Facebook, you know, now they have the hearts. I'm trying to like, yeah. let me give this thing a heart. Let me, like, that's yes. how I'm feeling. I want, because now, I feel like if something is, if I'm in control of, let's say, helping someone feel better, they can know, like, yo, this is love. Like, this is cool. This is great. And let me go ahead and do my part. It may be something small, but it's something. It's anything. I know people that I've helped in my practice who never heard the word, I love you. That's, he that's, so, that's heavy. so I'm saying, so people, people are not saying it, people who are not saying it. That on a regular, it's growing, they grew up. And I, and I would always say to them, well, I love you. I see you and I love you. Well, you don't know me. It doesn't matter. I love you. I'm invested in you. Yeah. And they weren't, and they weren't used to that. Actually, when you say that, I mean, they're almost two in the same. When you say I love you, it's like I'm invested in you. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. we're, yeah we're, we're connected. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's sad but real that someone listening right now, watching or not, has never heard I love you. Right. So to hear it so casually said, casual in the sense of like as in it's yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still understanding the meaning and the power of the word. It's gonna be moving. So hey, to my mom, yeah. I talk to her five times a day. I say I love you before I got the phone. Every time it doesn't get old. Well, no, it's just shouldn't. my daughters. I say I love you, love you, love you. I mean, we say it, yeah. and it's funny. <laughs> you know, it's funny we laugh because you know I, I lost a brother last year, six I'm months so, ago. So so sorry. Thank you. So I'm still devastated by it. And it's like it's, but it's funny. Like we used to always say I love you to you all the time. It's like we yeah. just always say because you, again, you would never know when you won't be here or you're she not, won't be here. You're not leaving anything on the table. Though. No, you know, and it sucks when you, you miss people. Folks are gone. But let's say you're giving the best of you or you leave with an I love you, the best was on the table. It's not like you gotta go back, I wish I had said yes. nah, it just it's that. And that's the feeling you're you're left with. So even sometimes you feel like folks don't deserve it, we still should give it to them. Yes. And I think that's that, that's sexy. Uh, they're saying, um, yes, love is not a feeling, it is an action. Love can be spat love is being spat on and hanging on the cross for those who hate you. That's one way of putting it. Yeah, it certainly is. That, it but that, but that, I, mean, I, I guess what they're trying to say, I guess, is kind yeah. of like the the people who are negative against you show them love. Right. Still show them. Like still the actions of being, I guess, being sexy and showing them love. Yeah, being sexy is not stopping being who you are because yeah. someone else stops being who they are. Yes. That, that That's really key because yeah. otherwise you become the very thing you despised. Uh, initially, you know, That's sounds true. good. Sounds easy. Um, no, I'm not. Listen, I'm not related to TD Jakes. I get that all the time. <laughs> I'm not Uncle Phil from, um, hey. from Fresh Prince. I get I get those James Avery. Really? May he rest in peace. I get those all the time. He's got that in the chat room. I get those all the time. I do. And, which they're both great people. I, I was I mean, going to say great. I'm not, I'm not upset. I'm <laughs> saying I'm not related to them at, at all. Right, I get those all the time. Right. I get that in the chat room. I get them all the time. <laughs> Oh my God, I James love it. James Avery in West. Anyway, people, you yes. know the theme song. Yes, but here's the here's the bomb. <laughs> that, that that episode where he it's, it's a famous episode, of course, when Ben Vereen comes on as as Will's dad uh, and leaves him. Who and doesn't know that that episode. scene. I cry. I still see it on you run across on YouTube. I still cry when I see that scene. And James Avery, the way he just was like matching him, matching Will, matching it, and at the end he just grabs him and holds him. Yo. And takes it, throws his hat off and just hugs him. It's like, yeah. we all want an Uncle Phil like that. We all want an Uncle Phil. Early on, I, I mean, I'm, I'm certainly not a perfect dude. Even when <laughs> my, <laughs> my fiance and I would, you know, kind of have disagreements, it'd be early on, especially still. She, you because know, I'm difficult to deal with sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. she would not say a word. Yes. She's while I walk in the house or whatever, she just walks up to me, gives me a hug. Yeah. I got nothing. Yeah. There's no, there's no defense for that. Yeah. It's over. You know what I mean? So I feel like when someone means a hug. Yeah. That's sometimes you all you need. It's all it says all the, it says everything. Well, to me, you yeah. knowing that you're a difficult guy sometimes that's sexy. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, you. You know what I mean? You know yourself. That you like, commit. Yeah, doing doing a better job. I yeah. feel like if we could all just do a better job of trying to get to know ourselves little by little along the way, we'll be better off. I feel like the the more you're willing to get to know you, the more you'll be willing to get to know somebody else. Mm. And people should be nice. Nice should be the norm. I always say that. We're we're in the zone, people. Our zone. I say it all the time. <laughs> people should be nice. That should be the norm. People should be nice. That should be the norm. It I should. That. And I say it all the time. It should be. I don't. I don't get what people just can't be. Generally, just nice. Don't don't be mean to me to get to know me first, and then you then you be mean to me. I might do something bad to you. <laughs> Let fun. me earn it. Let me earn, earn the meanness. <laughs> You want to call me a bitch? So like, get to know me first before yeah. you get to call me that. Because yeah. like, I know, want you to mean it. Yeah, I want you to really <laughs> get proof that I am. 
That's right. Before you call it to me. Hello. So otherwise, yeah. be nice, be kind to each other. It's, it's not that hard to me. I don't. And, and and I guess getting to know yourself better will allow you to, to project out any kind of positivity. I guess for sure. Because sometimes circumstances are are really about me. Yeah. It's not about the other person. Right. You know, which is some some demons that I might be dealing with. And again, I can't give them that when it's it's me. Yeah. So again, daily process. You guys, daily. I am too sexy is a book. Stan Pierce, the second MBA, is the is the author, motivational comedian, speaker, actor. He's for hire. So I mean Thank like you. people listen, don't be shy. <laughs> don't be. Go to stanpearson.com, click that request stan link. Do it now before I get mad. And the uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's uh, all my social media platforms yeah. with the book Am I Too Sexy? is available on stanpearson.com and you can actually go to Amazon and I'd really appreciate you grabbing it and then heck leaving an awesome comment or comment on what you thought your your honest feelings about the book but quite honestly if you know someone that's ever had self-esteem confidence issues this would be an incredible gift uh, to them and then get one for yourself so you all can grow learn and love together I agree thank you for being on the show thank you for having me James I love having you truly appreciate it this is awesome yes thank you you're welcome anytime um breaking into is on itunes it's on youtube under a break under black hollywood live then bringing it to subscribe to black hollywood live on those platforms you can actually subscribe to the show and have it just delivered to your phone you can hear my voice i mean when you want to hear my voice every week just hello I, I do and then of course you can go to my facebook page breaking into where all my past episodes are on there too i have them in a little place i'm an organizer so on a little playlist and you can actually watch them there also i'm james lott jr you can follow me at all social media platforms at james lott jr if you can't find the name google it i am googleable Google, 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 I am. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs> From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio. Instagram me at KingXOBay. Thanks for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.